Hello friends, today I am going to explain you how to write the Peyronov's form for a given structure using the Hewart formula. Later, we are also going to look into how to write the Peyronov's form in the Hewart formula. So, I have taken say one example over here. This particular structure is a aldehyde, so therefore aldo and it has a 6 carbon, I have named the carbon over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and I have numbered them. So it is a aldohexosis. I am going to show how to write the Pyranos form for this particular structure. Now as we know this particular given structure is called as the Fisher formula. If you want to make a pyranose, then the OH group of carbon number 5, see here, the OH group of carbon number 5 should be attacking the carbon number 1. Let us start. What you have to do is that, first I will show you in the Fisher formula, when the carbon number 5 attacks the carbon number 1, here yeah, carbon number 1, then you may write the carbon number 1 having OH group on the right hand side plus carbon number 1 having the OH group on left hand side. This such type of carbons are known as the anomers shown with the asterisk symbol. It is a very important point therefore I am taking it first. So remember carbon number 5 is attacking carbon number 1. Carbon number 1 will open up, will have OH group on right hand side and on the left hand side. It's a numeric carbon. Let us complete the remaining structure. Carbon number 4, no change. Talking about carbon number 5, right, the H, don't make a sharp H, the OH group. The carbon number 5 OH group is going to form a bond with carbon number 1. Just draw it like this. So the H has disappeared from the OH group. So where it has gone? This H has come over here. So you can see this aldehyde hydrogen I have written over here. The oxygen of the aldehyde group will gain the H. Similarly, as we know, carbon number 5 hydroxyl group is going to form bond with carbon number 1. This time, the OH group of carbon number 5 is attacking the carbon number 1 and the oxygen of the aldehyde group is going on the left hand side and it is gaining this H over here. So in this manner it, it is converted into a ring structure. This, there are two stereoisomers of the ring structures. Now this will be called as the alpha form because it is having on the right hand side and this will be called as the beta form. So, it is a alpha aldo exosis whatever will the name you can call it as alpha and whatever the name will be it will be prefixed by the beta if the structure is this. How to write the Havot formula? To write the Havot formula now first we are going to write the pyranos form. So, pyranos means a six membered ring. So, very first thing is what you have to do is that try to make a skeleton which is a six member something like a benzene ring not exactly but something like that. What you do is that you have this carbon number one which is the aldehyde group you write it over here 
This is a carbon number one. Carbon number two. Carbon number two. What you have to see is that the OH is on the left hand side. Whatever is on the left hand side will go up, and whatever is on the right hand side will come down, downwards. So I will say you this will be carbon number one. This will be carbon number two. This is going to be carbon number three. This will be going to carbon number five. Uh, four, sorry, four. Carbon number five, and this is going to be the carbon number six. You have to first, start with this. It's a very important thing. You should understand. You have to make a six-membered ring. So it should look something like a six-membered ring. What you will do is that, as I said, you carbon number five, carbon number five OH group is attacking carbon number one aldehyde group. So to show that here in the Havard formula, this is the OH group, carbon number five is OH group, which is going to attack the carbon number one. But this seems to be far apart. So how I will explain the bond formation between carbon number five OH group and carbon number one, that is aldehyde group. So what you do is that you do the reorientation at C five atom. That is carbon number five. Let us let us reorient the carbon number five. How? You shift this OH group in this direction. Whatever you wish in this direction. I am making it clockwise, and the H will be shifting here. Make no changes at other carbon. As you see, we are going to only reorient carbon number five. See here, carbon number five. OH group. I will shift here. So the CS two group is going to come here. The alcohol group. And the H is shifting downwards. The H should be here. What has happened is that the OH group is now. Exactly in the front of carbon number one, show it like this. This results. So, don't forget to write this oxygen, which is the same. So, this results in the formation of the ring. So remember, this is the same OH group. It's oxygen. This one. Now you see that this carbon is having oxygen. The double bond has opened up, and this hydrogen will be gained over here, over here, and over here. This hydrogen. But since the carbonyl group is a flat structure. It can have the OH group on the upper side, or the attack can result the formation of OH group below. That is, we will write H here, go OH downwards. So there are two formations: OH on up, OH down. OH up, as I said, you beta form. The one which is upward. Will be called as the beta form. Remember, if the OH is on right hand side or downward, it will be called as the alpha form, and remaining structure will be as it is. So the OH group attacks the carbonyl group, and when it happens, this oxygen, as you see, is getting attached here. OH goes up. Or this oxygen goes down, OH goes up, upward, beta form, OH downward, alpha form. How to write the Havard formula for this particular aldohexoses which is given over here? And this is a particular Havard formula I am going to write in the Furanus form. First, let me show writing the Furanus form of this aldohexoses using the 
Fischer formula. In the Furano's form, the carbon number one, carbon number one, will form bond with the OH group of the carbon number four. So you have a carbon number four over here. It is going to form bond with the carbon number one, and a ring formation take place. So let me draw this carbon number four OH group. So this is actually this is the OH group which is attacking the carbon number one. So I have written the carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and the carbon number six. Let me number it. So what you see here is that this carbon number four is going to attack the carbon number one. So this oxygen of the carbon number four, I have to show it over here. This oxygen, and then it is forming a bond with the carbon. It's forming a bond with the carbon. That is a ring formation. When this ring formation take place, there is oxygen on the carbon or the aldehyde. So I will write it here. This oxygen and the hydrogen which has disappeared from here, it will come over here. There is also a hydrogen on the aldehyde, which I will write it here. So this carbon, but. Why I have written the OH on the right hand side? So no issue. I can write this. I write the same structure. Carbon number four, as I said, you using the oxygen will form a bond with the carbon number one. This time, I will write the OH group on left hand side. And the hydrogen on the right hand side. So you can write the OH group on right hand side, and you can also write it on the left hand side. It is because the aldehyde is a planar structure. The double bond present in the aldehyde is always planar. So when the OH group attacks the aldehyde's double bond of the aldehyde group, will get converted into OH group, which can be below the plane. Or it can be above the plane. When it is above the plane, that is on the left hand side, it is called as the beta form. And if it is below the plane, that is on the right hand side, then it is called as the alpha form. <coughs> that is a five-membered ring. You can see here one, two, three, four, five. So this is a five-membered ring. But it will look much better if we write the Hawat formula. So, for writing a five-membered ring structure, you should start writing something which looks like a five-membered ring. We'll write the same structure in the five-membered form. Carbon number one over here. Then I will write the carbon number two. Here, carbon number three here, carbon number four here. I will show the remaining also. Let me first number this. This is carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five. Here I am going to write the carbon number six as well. In carbon number two, you see the OH group is on the right hand side. So it will should be written downwards. The H is on the left hand side, so it should be written upwards. Same for carbon number three. The same aldohexoses I have converted into an orientation, so that I am able to explain your five-membered ring. Now, as the case is, the OH group of carbon number four should be attacking carbon number one, double bond. But the carbon number four is world apart from the carbon number one double bond where it is going to attack for for ring formation. So to show the proper attack, let us reorient the structure. I will rotate this structure carbon number four, the hydroxyl group on the carbon number four. I will shift it here. Similarly. 
so carbon number five this bundle I would like to shift it in the place of hydrogen this bundle in the place of hydrogen over here and this hydrogen in the place of OH at see clockwise rotation okay so I have carbon number one carbon number two I'm not changing it carbon number four Oh, sorry three sorry carbon number three no change remember this one two three here at the carbon number four there is a lot of changes what I've done is this H I've shifted over here so this H will be written over here sorry that's so clear then this OH is going here on carbon number 5's position wherever carbon number 5 was there there OH is in so this OH is shifting over here so this group should be the OH group forgive me for this mistake so I have H here H has shifted over here uh, OH has shifted over here clockwise and this group is coming over here so this group is coming over here so what we have here we have OH H and CH2OH group hope so you are able to see this see here OH group goes here H here and this group which was at the carbon number 5 has come over here this group carbon number 5 has come here <coughs> why this reorientation was needed is that you see the carbon number 4's OH group is now exactly opposite to carbon number 1 for the attack so this oxygen is going to attack the carbon number one you have a oxygen here this oxygen this forming a bond here to make a bond you make a bond it's the same oxygen this one I will all write it once uh, once again you know the reason the reason is that when this oxygen attacks the carbon it forms a bond here same but as I just said you the car carbonyl group is a planar structure so the resultant OH on this carbon can be below the plane you can go downwards or it may stay upward so which what remains is the hydrogen so OH downwards or OH upwards because of this attack on the planar structure of carbonyl group OH downwards will be called as the alpha form same as this OH upward is called as the beta form same as this remaining structure should be written as it is the H the OH So that's it we have a structure which looks a five member ring and a structure which looks like a again a five member ring again but in the beta form so remember this carbon your carbon number one anomeric carbon it is because of this anomeric carbon we are having the alpha form and beta form Thank you.